You can build a perfect machine out of imperfect parts. Urza, flavor text of Coalition Victory. It can be said that you are never truly prepared for the end. No matter what you plan, it could not survive contact with the enemy. This is true even of the greatest masterminds in the multiverse, for their plans have to contend with the greatest enemies in the multiverse. For over a thousand years, the Planeswalker Urza had made preparations to protect his world from an invasion so devastating that it could be synonymous with Doomsday. His work was focused always on the approaching attack, creating masterpieces of artifice, growing massive armies, and committing all sorts of atrocities in order to defeat the apocalypse. But for all of his planning, his machines, and his armies, Urza was never truly ready for the invasion when it arrived. The day began with holes puncturing the sky, portals through which appeared the essence of nightmares, Phyrexians of all sorts and sizes, from small skirmishers to devastating plague ships to massive cruisers, swarmed out and began their assault. The invasion had begun. The end had begun. The skyship Weatherlight appeared over the skies of Benalia and immediately engaged with the Phyrexian Armada pouring through the portals, firing its ray cannons at any and all vessels it could, attempting to shut down the portals before too many horrors could pass through. The crew achieved mild success before heading to the capital city to attempt to warn them of the threat to rally aid and evacuate the citizens. Meanwhile, in the east, two men made their own stand against Phyrexia. Urza, alongside his longtime friend Barin, encased in power suits of the Planeswalker's design. They met the Phyrexian forces with their own army. The Metathran, Urza's secret genetics project, was finally unleashed, and threw themselves into the fray while his Falcon engines intercepted and tore through Phyrexian flesh. The two men, both powerful in their own right, joined the battle as well, with Baron taking control of a dragon engine while Urza devastated a dreadnought. As the fighting intensified, Urza spotted a legion of Sarah's angels on the horizon and decided that now was a good time to depart. After all, he had pressing business elsewhere, though it would not be as Urza. At the capital city, all the local garrison cared about was the fact that Gerard Capuchin was technically a deserter of the army and had the bulk of the crew thrown into prison alongside a raving, blind seer. This imprisonment did not last long, as the invasion force managed to break through Baron's position and overwhelm the city. The Weatherlight crew was able to escape, though not before a terrifying run-in with the commander of the attack a monstrous, spider-like Phyrexian known as Sabo Tavok. As more Phyrexians pour out of the sky and gain footholds on Dominaria, Urza returns, alongside Baron, to Talaria, where they awaken the generals of the Metathran army, a pair known as Thaddeus and Agnate. To his generals, Urza gave a single command. They were to take their army and head to the desert, where they would lay siege to the Phyrexian forces in the caves of Koilos. 
the Phyrexian invasion was no mere battle for control of the plain. It was one of survival, a conflict that threatened to annihilate all living beings on Dominaria, and all living beings responded. Great apes tore the Phyrexians apart while giant spiders entrapped the invaders. Monstrous Kavu ignored their typical prey to savage these new victims, and necromancers put their undead servants to work battling the forces of Yogmoth. Fairies and druids allied with sea serpents and merfolk. Across the plain, creatures both sentient and not joined together, uniting under Urza's banner as the Coalition of Dominaria, and fought as one against the invasion forces. As more and more battles take place, with Dominarians gaining and losing ground, the Weatherlight crew is guided by the Blind Seer, who eventually directs them towards Koilos. After one of these early battles, Hana reveals to Gerard an injury she gained, one that appeared to have become infected. The blind seer, grimly, informs her that she's become afflicted with the Phyrexian plague. Teferi, having himself become a planeswalker, was approached by Urza to assist in the war effort. Urza wanted Teferi's help in closing more portals and, more importantly, wished to utilize the Zalfiran armies to combat more Phyrexian forces. Teferi aided Urza in closing the portals, but as the task finished, he turned around and phased out his nation of Zalfir, placing them out of sync with time. In Teferi's mind, subjecting his people to Urza's plans was as good as a death sentence and he saw no reason to sacrifice them for Dominaria. Later, Teferi would phase out Shiv as well, sparing his friend Joira's people from Urza's machinations. Betrayed, but not deterred, Urza continued his plans, assembling to his side eight other planeswalkers to combat Phyrexia. Bolivar, Commodore Guff, Windgrace, Tevesh Zot, Freyalis, and Taysir. Teferi, alongside another named Parcher, were also intended to join this group, the Nine Titans, but Teferi's betrayal and Parcher's particular badness caused them to be replaced by Daria and Christina, respectively. Equipped with Urza's powerful Titan engines, these planeswalkers made their way to Koilos, where the forces of Dominaria were converging. As this went on, Urza held a conversation with Baran, one in which he casually revealed Baran's beloved daughter, Hana, had passed away, claimed by the Phyrexian Plague some two weeks prior. Baran had long been Urza's closest ally, his good friend and confidant. Urza's delay in informing Baran of his daughter's passing was a crushing blow, one that utterly destroyed all faith he had in the Planeswalker. I spent my life fighting battles I did not believe in because I believed in you. No more. The cost is too high. Belief is too rare. I've been a fool. I fought for things I did not love and let what I loved slip away. First my wife, and then my daughter. And now, myself. Baran exhumed Hana's body, taking her back to Teleria, where she was buried alongside her mother, Rain. With his family entombed, Baran committed his last act, casting a spell that obliterated the entirety of Teleria. 
destroying all things upon it. The fight for Corlos was long and hard fought, with the forces of Dominaria slamming against the monsters of Phyrexia. Planeswalkers in their Titan engines decimated Dreadnoughts and Dragon engines alike, while Metathran and the other forces of the Coalition fought bitterly for every inch of ground. During this fight, Gerard came dangerously close to being captured by Tsabo Tavak, though he was saved when Karn, the Golem, at last broke his vow of pacifism and brutalized the Phyrexian general. In the end, the battle was won, with the blind seer revealing himself to be Urza. Together with Gerard, Urza destroys the Phyrexian portal at Koilos, and a grand celebration is held in commemoration of their victory. Yet, only days later, those who looked up into the sky knew that the nightmare was not over. The Rothi overlay had begun, and all of the Phyrexian forces on Wrath are transported to Dominaria. The true invasion had only just begun. The forces of the Coalition are spread out across Dominaria, now facing even fiercer battles than before. The Dominarians fight valiantly on all fronts, from Urborg to Lanawar to Keld, but find themselves always losing ground. Having decided to take the fight to Phyrexia, Urza assembles his nine titans and together, they planeswalk into Yogmoth's hellish realm. Here, Urza reveals his plan to use mighty soul bombs placed on each layer to utterly devastate the world. All is going well at first, until the group is betrayed by Tevesh Zat, who kills both Daria and Christina. Urza calmly activates the kill rubric in Zant's Titan engine, killing the draconic planeswalker and draining him of all of his power. This energy is then used to power the Master Soul Bomb, fueling the array of explosives. Tevesh Zant, Urza explained, was always going to betray them, so that Urza might have an excuse to sacrifice him for the plan. Though furious at this line of thinking, the surviving titans carried on with the plan, while Urza marveled at the world they were going to destroy. For thousands of years, he despised Phyrexia, hated Yogmoth, and what the ineffable had caused. But here, Urza saw a world of pure artifice and logic, mathematics and machines. Truly, in his mind, destroying this place would be a great loss for the multiverse. Meanwhile, during a battle against the Predator, Gerard is teleported into the stronghold by Urtai. Here, he finds his old friend, Krovax, now the Evancar of the Stronghold and commander of the Invasion Force. The two battle only briefly, before Krovax is able to tempt Gerard. Yogmoth, the vampire explains, is capable of granting many gifts, even reviving Hana. Krovax displays Selenia, his angel, who had been revived and gifted to him by the god of Phyrexia as proof. Seeing for himself what Yogmoth offered, Gerard accepted and was teleported into the deepest parts of Phyrexia. Meanwhile, 
the battles were going poorly for Dominaria. To compound on the Phyrexian threat, Tevesh Zat had spoken whispers of power and ancient divinity into the ears of Daragaz prior to leaving for Phyrexia. Now aware of his true status, Rama Daragaz freed and revived his four companions, Rith, Treva, Dromar, and Krosis the primeval dragons of Dominaria. Awakened and full of power, these five godlike dragons set claim to the whole world of Dominaria and attacked any that dared to exist on their world, Phyrexian and Coalition forces alike. It was only thanks to the intervention of Karn who convinced Daragaz that what the primevals were doing was wrong, that their chain of power was sundered. Daragaz killed himself, weakening the other primevals enough so that they could all be defeated. In Phyrexia, Gerard was shocked to discover Urza also kneeling before Yogmoth. The planeswalker had at last succumbed to madness, pledging his loyalty to the ineffable. He betrayed the Titans, killing Taesir and destroying the Master Soul Bomb before submitting to his new god. Yogmoth, the ineffable, the dark master of Phyrexia, was pleased that the hero of Dominaria and the architect of the plane's defense now both knelt before him. Yet their submission alone was not enough for Yogmoth, who turned his ninth sphere into a massive arena. No, these two heroes, these two legends, would fight to the death. Only the winner could stand at Yogmoth's side, granted any boon they desired. Equipped with soul-slaying weaponry, Urza and Gerard fought one another in the Phyrexian arena. Urza was phenomenally powerful, with a host of magical abilities. Yet here in Yogmoth's presence, he was rendered mortal with his powers severely hampered. Gerard, meanwhile, had skill and experience on his side, and further, was practically created by Urza to be the ultimate living weapon. The battle was fierce, but Gerard was victorious, severing Urza's head and holding it up for all to see. Gerard was granted his prize. Hana, alive once again, stood before him. But Gerard was not fooled. This was merely Yogmoth in disguise, and Gerard lashed out violently, slashing the false Hana open with the soul sword he still wielded. Injured, and furious. Yogmoth teleported Gerard back to the stronghold on instinct, where the hero of Dominaria battled and slew Krovax before being picked up by the Weatherlight. But the loss of the Evancar was nothing for Yogmoth, who now dropped all preamble and entered Dominaria himself appearing as a massive cloud of death that annihilated all in its path. Even powerful planeswalkers like Bo Lavar and Guff were slain instantly by this embodiment of the end. Reunited with the rest of the crew, Gerard and his friends resolved to battle Yogmoth head on. At first, 
they tried harnessing the might of the Null Moon, an ancient Thrian artifact that had been gathering pure white mana in the skies above Dominaria for thousands of years. The weather light rammed the Null Moon, unleashing its stored up mana on Yogmoth. But while the Ineffable was injured by this attack, he was far from beaten, and now attacked the skyship directly, swarming the crew with dark tendrils and promises of death. Surrounded on all sides, and staring death in the face, Urza, who lived on even as a head, told the crew of his final plan, the legacy itself, and instructed Gerard to rip out his Power Stone eyes to finally complete the legacy. Gerard did so, placing the Might Stone and Weak Stone in Karn's chest, perishing as the light of the legacy burst forth. Goodbye, Dominaria. Ever since his spark ignited, Urza had dedicated his life to the defense of his home. The plans he devised, the machines he built, and the atrocities he committed, all being done for the sake of Dominaria. Through grief, despair, and madness, he pressed on, even after faltering, stumbling along the way, he was able to correct his path. In the end, Urza gave all he had, sacrificing everything, even his own life, in order to achieve the impossible. As the light of the legacy grew brighter, in death, Urza was finally victorious over Yogmoth. With the death of their god, the Phyrexians across Dominaria simply shut down offering no resistance to the Coalition forces now tearing them apart. Though the loss of life was great, the devastation immense, it was finally over. Dominaria stood victorious, having survived and repelled the Phyrexian invasion. It would take almost a full year to fully eliminate the last Phyrexians, but at last a grand celebration was held, with monuments being erected to commemorate those who perished in the invasion, and to celebrate the heroes who gave everything to defeat Yogmoth at last. The surviving members of the Weatherlight crew, Sisse, Tongarth and Squee were presented with a new skyship, as the Weatherlight itself was utterly destroyed when the legacy activated. Now a hero to all of Dominaria, Sisse set off with her crew on a new adventure, on board the skyship Victory. As for Karn, who inherited Urza's spark and was now the first artificial planeswalker. His story would continue, though that is a tale for another time. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like or sharing this video with your friends. If you're a fan of the Weatherlight, 
its crew, or the Weatherlight Saga as a whole, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell. I'll be releasing more videos on this topic. Finally, this video is brought to you by my patrons. If you enjoy my work and would like to support me, head on over to my Patreon. A link to it will be in the description below. Thanks again, and have a great day.